be me. 17 year old degenerate. Decide to say fuck homework I'll roleplay instead. Scroll through a fandom forum until I find a fallout roleplay. New Vegas come one come all. Decide that this couldn't be too bad. Setting is that the platinum trip was destroyed and Caesar has yet to attack the dam. Cool.jpg I decide that maybe this is worth my while. Look through character pages. There must have been 50 different boss chapters because there were lone surviving paladins everywhere. If I hadn't scrolled down I wouldn't have cringed at the metric fuckton amount of NCR rangers. They are more numerous than stealth archers. Every so often I'd come across a raider or a edgy gangster. Eventually I got to the better character pages. Among them were a few traveling traders. Two legionaries. A bunch of random civilians. And a very feisty vault dweller who hated non-whites. Remember this guy I'll explain later. I see that no one has yet to make an enclave character. Dickerect.gif Make the most original character icon for a fandom. Character is a thin male robotics engineer spy sent to gain support into the Mojave and find intel on the boss and NCR. Mods argue that Akmon are the enclave I was a dead uh. I should have stated that all these faggots are probable in Antifa's gay fan club. GM thinks that I'll be a good addition to the roleplay so he allows it. Badly.png They send me the special and skills sheets to fill out. I take my time thinking about what I want. Put my specials into intelligence and charisma. Put my skills into science, repair, and speech. I see all the other filled out sheets. All of these boss edge lords put their specials into strength and charisma. How much stronger can you be if you are already in power armor? Retarded.pip. All the edgy kids put their skills into sneak, speech, and unarmed combat. Power armored ninja kids.bat. Among the edge there are a few of us who aren't absolute tards. But as unlikely as humanly possible, we are the misfits. I decide I'll start off in the northern part of the Mojave. It's a hot wasteland that is not hospitable to life. I mark this down because intel. Comma at this point I get a gift from the heavens. Everyone got something directly from the GM. While walking through the wasteland I come across a slightly damaged Protectron. While it has some minor damage, most of its components are intact. I find out that it is simply out of energy, after a perception check. Using my science skills, and a roll of 16, I rig an energy pack for my plasma defender to be a battery for the Protectron. I'll insert it into the robot and and faster than the speed of light a mod says you got a roll to see if it works bro. Fucking cucks. Roller 10. The protectron comes online but only one of its arms work. God damn it. Proceed to perception check for the problem. Don't have to roll because I'm a robotics engineer. You find that until you get a fusion core, the robot won't be at peak efficiency. What in the fuck dot prototype? Decide to say fuck it and begin walking south. Every so often mods will throw a ghoul or a coyote at me but in all they actually don't fuck with me. After a half a day's travel I decide to stop and rest. That is until I'm woken up in the middle of the night by the groaning of a death claw. As soon as I wake up I roll for a perception check, critical success bitch. A young death claw has been injured by a big horner it was trying to kill. I make sure to put a sigh of relief into my post. I was about to shoot the death claw and get it over with until I realized it hadn't been a mod that gave me this random encounter. It was the GM. I quickly go through the post again and find that the GM had kinda emphasized that the death claw could not fight back. All other characters would have no ock reason not to kill this thing. But my character is a part of the enclave. Guess which faction has successfully tamed death claws? EvilGrinEngaged.com I approach the death claw which is laying on its back. Sneak roll fuck. Deathclaw sees me as soon as I move into its eyesight. Thankfully it doesn't make a move on me but it does bear its teeth and swipe in my direction. I look at it and do a perception check on the wounds. 13. From what I can tell the beast is not mortally wounded but I can't tell how deep the wound is or how long it has been wounded from where I am. The obvious thing to do is get closer right? Nah fuck that shit bro. I go back to my bag and start looking through it for a stim pack. I only had the one stim pack so I had to make sure this was worth it. I go back to the death claw and it's clawing at the long horner. Still kiss dot web. As a person with high intelligence I know the death claws are very smart animals. I do not approach the beast but I make sure it can see the stim pack I have. 
I motion the stim pack as if I'd be sticking myself with it. Roll for an intelligence check on the death claw. Fucking critical success. The creature stops baring its teeth at me and watches without emotion as I motion with the stim pack. I roll to see what happens if I approach it, roll a 3. Death claw jumps up and almost charges me. Perception check on wounds. 17. Death claw falls down. I stop approaching the death claw and watch as it sprawls itself on the ground. It writhes in pain for a while. This is my chance. Do a speed roll. 13. Get really close to the death claw. Stab the stim pack into its back and let the fluids of faith flow. Get away as fast as possible. I do get a small slash on my calf as I run away but nothing to worry about. After a few seconds of the death claw being confused and painless it stands up and looks at me. I roll to see if it attacks, runs away, or stays with me. Roll a 12. Death claw runs off into the night. Well that was cool, a good waste of a stim pack. I decide to go back to sleep. Walk past Higa, the name of the protectron, and lay down. Fucking death claw ruined my night and almost made me shit myself. At this point the mods are wondering what in the fuck the GM is doing, but it's clear that due to my character being the only bad guy I should get special shit. Cool. Everyone's gonna kill me. Wake up the next morning and start hiking. Walk past the carcass of the longhorner and get a foul stench in my nostrils. Get a closer look at the dead creature. Something had pissed on the longhorner to mark its territory. Very obvious that a death claw was around somewhere. Do a perception check, 15. I see a few large footprints but nothing indicating that this wasn't from the night before or what direction the death claw ran off to. I should make it clear now that this roleplay was quote hardcore. If you were killed, you were dead. There was no getting resurrected or saved by a miracle. Unless a doctor was on standby to see to a non-fatal wound. You're dead. So fuck that to staying in the wilderness. I made a roll to see if I could find any nearby rolls and with success I found a highway to the southeast. And with that highway I found Chen crazed cock blokers. This time it wasn't a random encounter, it was me walking into another player's random encounter. In the distance I saw six fiends standing around a single person, who I couldn't see from my position. Decide I'll get closer to see what's going down. Do a sneak roll. Critical fucking fail. Egor trips on a rock and makes loud crashing sound. God damn it you retard. While Egor is getting himself up I pull out my hunting rifle and take pot shots at the fiends that are now at sprinting at me. I'll pop one in the chest before they get too close for long range weapons. Egor is up and shooting with his good hand. I whip out my plasma defender and blast a fiend in the face. Got some goo on your face jpg. No more fiends coming from my direction. Turn around and see a fire axe buried in what would be Egor's chest. Two fiends are okay. Two dead. One injured. One with the other player who is hostage. Well fuck. I start shooting rapidly with my defender while trying to keep them far enough away from me. I'm able to injure one of the cunts before I fail an agility roll and trip on a rock. Lame gore.gif. I'm laying here trying to get up, until the fiend is standing over me with his big fucking fire axe. Are you ready to die you fucking cunt? Oh shit this is the end. Do an emergency roll and get a 13. GM steps into the engagement. I see that he's typing. I should let you know now that the GM does all the player killing and so far 3 players have died. Prepare to be split like firewood. Out of the darkness shall rise. A light that dwells. Peter braces for the impact of the melee weapon when out of the silence of the wasteland emerges the blood curdling roar of an angry beast, one that sees one of its own in danger. What in the fuck? Out of fucking nowhere the death claw I saved pummels a fiend and proceeds to tear him in half by his torso. Keep in mind young death claws are the same size as humans and still much stronger. Stim pack used correctly. Web. I'm laying here on the ground, pissing myself while a death claw is murdering and biting chunks out of fiends. All of the players at this point, except the non edge lords, are getting madder than hell in the cock chat. GM just says that if you feed a dog today, it helps you hunt tomorrow. GM is a real nigger. A few players stay mad but in reality it's just a young death claw, right? Back to the roleplay and I'm just flabbergasted by the current turn of events. After the death claw gets done chowing down on fiends it approaches me. Fuck bro you're still hungry.html. 
It stops in front of me and does a poking motion at its wound. No way. This thing isn't gonna kill me. This bastard remembers me. Slowly stand up and back away from the death claw. The death claw bows its head and slowly steps forward every time you step back. Decide to do a tame check, wasn't even sure if I could. GM makes an automatic critical success out of it. I just got a death claw as a pet. Easy boy, just stay calm alright? Stop looking at this big sexy beast and walk over to Egor. He's pretty fucked up but it is only wiring and hull damage, easy fix with my skills. Remember about the hostage and turn to look over to where they were. Both the fiend and the hostage are still there. I can tell who the hostage is now. Fucking vault suit. It's the racist vault dweller. My inner Nazi tells me to get my ass over there and help out. Start walking over and the fiend drops his baseball bat. Hey man just keep that monster of yours all cool man, I'll be chill. Look back and see the death claw eyeing the fiend carefully. I was looking for a new boss anyways man. We were only taking this guy hostage because he called me a nigger, we weren't gonna kill him man. Watch as the vault dweller shakes loose of his constraints picks up the bat and does a strength check. 16. Hits the fiend one time in the head and sends him to the ground. Continues beating him until he's dead. Hi, I'm Conrad. At this point people in the ook chat are getting all mad that Conrad didn't die. No one except a few, including myself, liked his character. He was blonde haired blue eyed beast of a man that beat the hell out of people but was elegantly polite to whites embrace. And Asians. Will be eradicated. So they had you captive for being a racist? They had me captive because I offered to trade my pit boy for their nigger, apparently, it wasn't for sale. My character laughs and so does Conrad, the death claw cackles. We both realize the death claw is still right behind me watching Conrad's every move. So you have a pet dragon? Well it doesn't have wings, what is it? My character just looks puzzled and scratches his head. It's a call the death claw and it kinda just likes me after I helped it last night. It's very smart so I guess it sees me as an ally. Cool, I'm just glad it's not any bigger or it might eat me. Haha. <laughs> yeah it's only a juvenile I think, my people used to raise them as frontline assets. Conrad just gives my character a look of total fair. They get bigger? My character turns and looks at it. Way bigger. After we go back and forth for a while I decide I'm gonna go and try to fix Egor. Do you mind if I come with you? As you can tell most people around these parts aren't friendly so yeah. Considering we were the two most hated people in the roleplay we kinda talked it out in the PMs how we should travel together. We spend a few hours fixing Egor and by the time he's up and running it's midday and the sun is blazing. Me and Conrad are thirsty, Egor is retarded, and Richardson, the death claw, is picking human leather out of his teeth. After taking 10 minutes IG to figure out which way is east and west we begin to head west up the road until we find a shack. Do you think anyone is in there? Does it matter Conrad? We're gonna die out in this heat and Egor is too retarded to go get help. Instead of doing the smart thing and knocking on the shack door, Conrad kicks it in and we send Egor. Egor of course walks in and says in monotone voice all clear. Conrad walks in first and absolutely loses his shit. Dude look. A guns and bullets magazine. We spend a while looking through the shack. A few beers. A bottle of liquor, and six nuka colas later we are sitting around like kings. Do you think there's are any food around here? Look around for food, perception check, fuck you no food. Nothing here but I got a few things in my backpack. Conrad nods and walks over to my bag and starts going through it. He does a search check and rolls a 17. Not only does he find food but he also finds my enclave uniform and armbands. You said your people tamed death claws. He pulls out an armband are these your people? My character is obviously rocked by the realization that this guy now knows that I'm an enclave spy. I stand there for a second about to shit my pants when I realize that this guy is a vault dweller. He's got no idea what the enclave is, I'll be fucking fine. Yes, we're called the enclave. We're the remnants of the United States government. I like you Conrad but you can't say anything to anyone. Factions have sprung up all across America that would kill me for what I am. Conrad gives me a thousand yard state and slowly slips the armband over his left arm. The white stars are as bright as Richardson is deadly. You saved my life Peter. I was taught as a young boy to love my country and it will love me. 
It's no coincidence that if you are the US government, that you saved me. Maybe it was a message from God. I've always been patriotic, and in my hour of need America sends me a monster, a man, and a robot. I'm with you brother. My face when we became a little more liked in the roleplay for all this brotherly love. My face when someone knocked on the shack door, scared the shit out of us, and Richardson woke up from his nap. Both of us panic I can duck. It wasn't a random encounter because neither a mod or the GM made the post. See, GM posted the character sheets and unless you specifically read posts you don't know who's who. So this person knocks on our door and we are panicking. I whisper to Conrad take off the goddamn armband. Egor is retarded so this happens so it seems someone is at the door. We get ready to open the door when I realize Richardson is breathing heavily and has his teeth bared. Perception check bitch. I put Richardson in the bedroom and tell him to please stay. Commanding a death claw was a no go. I walk over to the door and breath. I slowly grab the doorknob and realize it was kicked in, door is broken. Strength check. Fuck dot gif. I do get the door open, but I also tear it off its hinges. Well shit at least we have that taken care of. Oh look an NCR ranger fully kitted and staring at me through the iconic ranger gas mask. Is there a reason you're in my shack? Speech check. 18. Oh this is your shack? We found the door almost off its hinges. Sorry about the door by the way. We? Before I could make a gesture to Conrad he pokes around the door and does his friendly greeting. Hi I'm Conrad. The ranger pauses and pushes his way into the shack. You should know that this is NCR property and breaking in is a federal crime. Dude completely ignores the speech check I made. Well see we didn't break in we. Yeah 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 save it for the judge, deactivate that robot and get on the. At this time he does a perception check and gets a critical success. He sees Richardson peeking through the doorway at him. Panic dot pip boy. Without even the slightest thought he draws his revolver and takes a shot at Richardson. Misses. Conrad does a strength and accuracy check. 15, 11. Punches the ranger in the neck and sends him to the ground. Ranger shoots at Conrad, misses and hits me in gut. Richardson rage mode dot eggs. Richardson goes full fucking beast mode and charges at the ranger. I can't see the terror on his face, but with all his screaming I can visualize it. Right before Richardson can get to him I scream out at him. Richardson stop. Surprisingly the GM doesn't do anything except say that Richardson stops in his tracks snarling at the ranger as he listened for an order of attack. Conrad looked at me confused. What are you doing? He just fucking shot you. We have to kill him. If we let Richardson kill him someone will be wondering why our death claw would be in a fucking shack. Then they might see Richardson and know it was us. If me or you kill him we would have to hide the body and that'd take too long. I paused to hold pressure on my wound. We gotta get him somewhere where he won't be able to follow us and we won't get blamed if he dies. After a few more minutes of minuscule delegating we tie the ranger up, disarm him, and take everything worthy of stealing and tie him up. Peter can you walk? Fuck no dot png. I end up using Egor as a walker but since he is retarded he walks like I'm not there. We open walk out of the shack to find a dozen legionaries and two centurions. Halt profligates. Fuck me dot web. My character is injured so all I can really do is tell Richardson to stay chill. At lightning speeds me and Conrad PM each other back and forth talking about what to do peace was never an option. Shit nigga l guess we'll halt.jpg. We mean no harm to the servants of Caesar. We only wish to go in peace. INB4 meta game, my character was well versed in major factions. And yet you've gotten yourself shot and have captured our prey. You bring a war beast with you and yet you pronounce to only one piece. Of course we had to run into the only two legion characters in the roleplay. Conrad decides to speak up and he does so with the utmost bullshittery. This guy just attacked us out of nowhere, you don't have to even worry about the death claw. It's a harmless beast and won't harm anyone, unless someone attacks its master. Fuck that's cringy, but Conrad was really trying to bullshit us out of the situation. Fine but you must relinquish the ranger to us, we have been hunting the degenerate for some time. Guy sends a few legionaries over to take the ranger away. Idiot lightning speed pms dot web. I told Conrad to let them take the ranger, we already had his shit. It is only appropriate that you are well compensated for capturing our prey, Caesar would insist. Me and Conrad weren't gonna refuse payment for a faggot that tried killing Richardson. 
We dare not use these forsaken technologies. The centurion approaches me and hands me three stim packs, which I later learned he had stolen from a NCR trooper squadron. Also I humbly ask that you use this, he hands me a single shot flare, yeah you know what's happening. If you are ever in need of help, servants of Caesar are willing to help enemies of the NCR. Me and Conrad are ecstatic and PMs. We just got the legion on our side. The most hated people in this RP are now all pretty much watching each other's backs. Couldn't be more coincidental. I later learned that the ranger was metagaming us and following us. Legion bros were looking for a reason to meet us so the ranger was stupid enough to do so. After he gives me the stim packs and the flare gun he gives Conrad a purse of denary. This ain't mountain blade dot scroll. We watched them crucify the ranger. Yes they did crucify the ranger and they insisted we stay to watch. His character. I didn't find out until later but because dickhead died he made a new character. A boss knight. Yeah gay I know. We decide to spend the night in the shack. Although in game we thought it was a bad idea to stay in the shack of the man we just sold to the legion. My wound isn't terrible but it takes time for the stim packs to really take effect. Douche mod says I got to use two of the stim packs. One for the blood and infection. One for healing. Yeah fuck that guy. We end up only having one stim pack left, so we decide to save it. The next morning we get ready to leave and we hear the ranger outside mumbling. He's still crucified, and the legion is gone. But instead of just dying he rolled for a strung out death. 15, I think. He pretty much begged us to save him, that he could give us a good deal. Saying that we wouldn't be executed for helping the legion. I'll give the guy this much, in the end he actually did well at playing his character. Conrad gets a terribly beautiful idea. Conrad whispers in my ear. What's a better way to suffer than to know his greatest enemy was just within his grasp, and he failed. See we knew this kid was edgy, and we knew this shit would make him engage in an edgy death. My character smiled and pulled Blackberry from his backpack. Look at this and tell me what you see. He did the cringy tired look up, like trembling and his eyes were half open. When his character figured out it was an enclave berry he apparently had some newfound strength. The enclave is back. That's impossible. No. I laughed really hard in real life. You wouldn't think we'd come back after the shit we had to endure, but we are. Conrad at this point walks up to him and cuts one of his leg arteries to make sure he dies. No chance he could oust us. Conrad looked over at me and said for the enclave. Before you get all frisky with me, we did this to trigger the other players who were reading. We knew they liked the story of a righteous hero hunting down bad guys like me and Conrad. Fuck their concepts of good and bad, we're the enclave. After we decide to hit the road Conrad asks what the US government is doing in New Vegas. I explained that in the past 50 years the enclave has lost a lot of power throughout the US. Factions like the NCR and Brotherhood were acidic and terroristic. On one hand you had the NCR who attempted to steal the rightful place of the enclave. Then you had the boss who would kill you and your family if you had tech they wanted. This seems like bullshit right, but unlike the edge masters of the roleplay Conrad was really doing well at roleplaying as a vault dweller. Someone who didn't know shit about the real world, we spent that day marching south. Every so often a mod would throw some rad scorpions at us but it was relatively quiet until we got to camp golf. We were a good ways from a perfect eyesight roll but Conrad got a good enough perception roll so that he could see figures in NCR armor and boss armor. I didn't know I what was happening but I did go ahead and read some other posts. Apparently some boss edgelords got together and thought they'd attack camp golf. I would think that this is good for them, getting out of their one man bunkers and all. But. They were having a monologue war with the NCR players. Literally just going back and forth about who was morally right or wrong. Edge kids were being edgy and we had a seat to the show. Here's where it gets spicy. One of the elite ranger snipers spots us hiding behind a broken car, a few hundred miles away. Doesn't perception roll, doesn't get out binoculars, doesn't even use the scope of his rifle. Just yells out in the next post hey I see some people over there. At this point I'm healed up to full health. Conrad is using the dead ranger's rifle and pistol, Richardson is hungry, and Egor is retarded. Me and Conrad are only equipped enough to take down maybe two players. Richardson can probably kill someone in power armor before being killed himself. And Egor may be able to avoid friendly fire. We don't stand a chance against four players, let alone a dozen boss and NCR edgelords. Speed roll. 
16. One issue in this role. We realize Egor is slow as fuck. Oh no dodgif. Thankfully the other players didn't sprint at us but they began steady walk towards us. We had maybe 5 minutes until they got to our location. We PM back and forth while the edge lords get their posts in. We have an idea to surpass the Metal Gear. Our turn to post and shit gets real. I quickly take the higher functioning parts out of Ego so that he no longer has the function of walking or rotating. I take off his non-working arm and by the time I get done salvaging parts off him. At max speeds, they've cut the distance between you. Hurry the fuck up Peter. Should I start shooting at them? No what the fuck those rangers are trained marksmen. Roll for an action. Critical success. After all is said and done I give some last words to Egor. Love you little buddy. For the enclave. For the enclave, sir. Me, Conrad, and Richardson run as fast as our 16 speedle will take us. Behind us we can hear the NCR and boss yelling for us to stop. Yeah sure, two groups of mortal enemies would tell us to stop instead of killing each other. We get away pretty quickly because of Vegor's sacrifice. We hear him blasting his little laser up until we hear a shot ring out and end his little robotic life. Brings me to tears knowing that he sacrificed himself to save us. But his sacrifice was not in vain. You see, my character is a robotics engineer. I repaired, put together, modified, and jury rigged Roberts. Egor would not go out as just a one armed protectron. The corner kid didn't roll very well for speed and when they did the GM said we were already too far away, especially since Egor slowed them down. So after they killed Egor, or so they thought, they sticked around to see if we left anything behind. They didn't find anything except for a few bolts I dropped while salvaging Egor and our footprints, they kept on talking about how that was weird of us to run away. One of the rules in the roleplay was not to avoid RP unless you had a reason, they thought they were cute by throwing some shade at us. It wasn't until Egor said for the enclave, that they all, in unison, shit their pants. What happens when an energy pack is overloaded? Well you have something like a grenade, but you'd need shrapnel to do any real damage. Well guess what the energy pack was overloading inside of? A protectron that was now rendered useless due to them shooting it. What happens to a military grade protectron when it is rendered useless? LT clears its memory and self destructs its CPU. Guess who connected the CPU to the overloaded energy pack? This guy. The energy pack, that I used as a battery for Egor, explodes after letting them know who his masters were. Let's just say the entirety of Egor's body was shrapnel, and it fucked them up. They all have to roll to see how hurt they are. Mods take sides. Most got off scot-free. A few hurt. But two rolled a 19 and 20. We just killed two heavily armed NCR troopers with a protectron bomb. Somebody was pissed. Somebody bitched to the mods. We run for about an hour, slowing down into a jog every so often. In our panic we ran in a random direction. It wasn't until I checked my pep boy, asked the GM where we had run off to, that I realized that we had run so far west that we were only a few miles south of the strip. We were tired, thirsty, and Richardson was hungry. I'm pretty sure we spent about 2 hours just trying to regain our energy after running so much. After regaining enough energy to walk, we began marching to west. If we could get to the mountains and keep them on left or right, we could run and hide if shit got serious. The trek would take a few days but since Egor had been killed and those corner kids chased us we had no other choice except to keep moving. It was nearing the end of the day when we started seeing smoke coming from a few miles west. In most situations I wouldn't dare approach smoke, meaning raiders possibly, but I was sure if there were raiders we could deal with them. Especially with a death claw on our side. We get close to the smoke when we realize that it's not raiders. The smoke was coming from five different cructifications, all burning their captives. It was our friends from the Legion. Good to see you friend, do you like what we've done with the degenerates? Apparently he had a 16 sneak roll, fucking sneaky bastard. We did a little small talk while the other centurion and the NPC legionaries showed up. Conrad's character didn't know anything about the legion but they didn't attack us and I hadn't mentioned them. So what did they do? Like are they just chem heads too? The centurion gets kinda edgy and laughs maniacally. These degenerates are scum that broke out of the NCR prison. They've been attacking traders, killing innocents, and obstructing our justice. This little farm they occupied belonged to the occupants they felt they needed to murder. 
Conrad was obviously pro-legion at this point. So is this what you do? Go after murderers, thieves, and criminals? The centurion gave a confused look at me, then back to Conrad. Yes and no. Our mission is to kill and see our scum wherever we find them, enslave or recruit whoever is willing to bow to Caesar, and well yeah kill degenerates whenever possible. The legion boys were not ready for Conrad's take on being an ignorant vault dweller, but they liked it. The centurion looks over our group and realizes one of us is missing. Where's your robot? I look at Conrad then back at the centurion. We lost him this afternoon. NCR and boss were chasing us, so I got him to slow them down while we got away. The centurion nodded and looked over at the burning crucifixions. While you lost a man, we gained one of our own. He motioned for someone dressed in a prison uniform to step forward. He was imprisoned with these degenerates and waited until the time was right to call us in for an ambush. He's my blood brother, and we found him because of you four. Three. Me and Conrad are the confused ones now as the centurion goes on to explain what he meant. You see, I thought he had died to NCR torture as long ago. Yet after you gave us the ranger we found out that he had been stalking these degenerates, before chasing you. We of course take every opportunity to make examples out of people like this. When we got here and began watching them, I realized that he was my brother. This must have been what the GM gave them as a gift. We got him alone and told him we were here for him, and this morning we slaughtered the degenerates, as you can tell. We look the guy's brother over and we can see that he's no regular prisoner. He has scars and tattoos that a dude most likely see on a follower of Caesar. Listen, we can't take more men on into our cohort. We're too large as is and well, I have an idea. At this point I am yesing as loud as possible I roll, I know what's about to happen. I want my brother to go with you, he'd be safe with you three. Especially with that beast of yours around. He can hunt, navigate, and track for you. As long as you don't treat him as you would a slave, he'll be a good soldier for you as well. What do you say? Well I think me and Conrad would be honored to bring on a follower of Caesar, if he can be discreet around our enemies, then I agree. Centurion's brother is a new player who had joined the roleplay a few days after I did. Guy's backstory did not mirror mine in the slightest but he was a spy like me. I was captured for stealing food from an NCR camp, they had no idea that I am a follower of Caesar. They would have hanged me. Then I guess we accept your gracious offer. Move in for a handshake. The centurion does a forearm shake, this was a truly cringe moment. After that it was just me and Conrad pilfering what the powder gangers had, which was a few pistols, a broken RCW, and fuck all amounts of ammo. Remember that I haven't even asked the legion guy what his name was. Decide to ask him. So what do they call you? My name given to me by the legion is Augustus Vulp. This guy is gonna get me killed. Jeff. We decided to spend the night at the farm, the one the powder gangers took over. Because fuck traveling.jpg. While we're all drinking and eating what the gang had Augustus pipes up about Richardson. So how did you tame a beast such as that? Great things could be done if we had those in the legion. Me and Conrad look at each other then back to Augustus. I guess you could say I have a knack for getting deadly monsters to like me. After a night of drinking, snoring, and Richardson tearing up carpet we set off east for a mile until we come across some farmers. I have to roll to see if they'd run away from Richardson. Roll a 9. Farmer pulls out a shotgun and approaches cautiously, why in the hell do you have a death claw following you around? Don't worry he's tame, how about you put the gun away? You'll make him nervous. Speech check. 16. Well if you say so, stranger. Why are you coming around these parts? All we got around here is mean bugs and mean thugs, keck pip boy. We're just traveling for the moment, where's the nearest town? The farmer turn around and points at a set of buildings behind him. LT ain't much of a town yet but we're setting up over at Bonnie Springs. If you take the road south, you'll come across good springs. They have more there but the road is dangerous now it says. Why do I feel like he's gonna give me a quest dodgif? We go into Bonnie Springs to find a few burnt down buildings and four semi livable buildings. They had a shop clinic, a bar hotel, a mayor's office sheriff's office, and a vacant shop that had been recently ransacked. Apparently, they made and sold makeshift weapons, armor, and medical supplies. Everyone in the town, a grand total of 20 NPCs, gave us dirty looks as we walked through. 
decide that we aren't looking to get dragged into stupid town quests, so we go to the store first. I roll for my charisma check, 13. Get a slight bonus on stuff I sell. Badum TSS. Sell the shit the ranger had, the stuff we got from the dead powder gangers, and buy some supplies to fix the laser RCW. Repair roll not needed because fuck the mods. Hey do you guys exchange money? I have some legion coins I'd like to train for caps. Store owner gives my the strangest look of all time. No sorry, I don't think anyone would want to buy those. Me buying them from you would be useless. Mod doesn't even let me do a speech roll. We leave and head over to the bar. As soon as we walk in the bar. If you're looking for your lady friend she's gone. We think them vipers she went off to court her. Sorry but your friend is probably dead. Ah uh, we aren't looking for a lady. She said I'd know her friends when I saw them. She's up there in one of them caves if you wanna go looking for her. We go back and forth until it's clear that the mod is dragging us into saving a player left behind by her IG friends. Fuckme.com. How the fuck are we supposed to kill a bunch of raiders and save a girl? Sounds like a chivalry comic book. Prepare for cringe. We need not to kill the raiders my friend, we need only to get the girl. So after we were dragged into saving a player who had recently gotten herself captured, mods were white knights and she was a real girl, the mods were pretty much saying. You better make sure this new player isn't killed Alan or we can make this game hard for you. Basically we knew exactly where this bitch was, and we knew there was a small group of vipers up there keeping her captive. She had come to this town expecting to get a few easy quests that would, in a IG week or two, would get her mediocre gear she could use to join the Enclave Lynch mob. Took me absolutely way too long to find out which meme character it was we were looking for, but I found it, and my cringe was sustained to minimum levels. Character name was Alyssa Petals. I think she was either 25 or 31, couldn't care less tbh. I hate reading other character sheets. She wasn't armed to the teeth like all the other dick bags in her general cringe group. She was a scribe in the boss, she was searching the wasteland for forgotten but useful tech cccc cringe. Apparently something very nice, reward wise, was promised to her if she could get rid of the bandits. I thought it over and if white knight mods are offering a good reward to a boss, it must be energy weapons. Energy gets me hard dot plasma. Augustus has a good point Conrad. Me and him might be able to sneak into the cave, get the girl out, then fuck off back to the town. Conrad wasn't gonna be a part of this mission because he insisted we run in and absolutely slaughter them all. Listen Conrad, me and you can take maybe 6 raiders in a head to head engagement. Pause to look at Richardson, picking his teeth. Okay we could take about 10, the 3 of us, but we have no clue how many are up there. Augustus does stuff like this all the time. He says that we have a better chance of sneaking in and out than going head to head with them and finding the girl alive by the time we get back. I pulled a bitch move and speech checked Conrad, it worked. Wait what the fuck, where is it then, we've been up here for like an hour trying to find it. I think that may be the cave. Let's just say the initial cave was on the right. Nothing in sight. Only the darkness of the cave's insides. My boy Valp pointed to my left. A big campfire and dozens of viper raiders putting together a makeshift camp. I rolled a 6 perception. So apparently I can't see shit because when I rolled for a perception check on trying to count, I got a fat 7. Thankfully Vulp rolled a 17 yeah he had high base perception. In the camp they had set up, 42 vipers were visible. I shit you not. 40 fucking 2, I didn't want to go look it up so I guess that the GM didn't like that the mods were white knighting, so he decided to off the bitch. Fucking Christ, overkill. Vulp looks at me and says. Do you have anything darker? Think for a second about my uniform. All black. Edgy. Would absolutely be godly if an enclave super spy broke into a raider camp, saved the boss, and received a reward for pretty much stealth archering. My character goes through my backpack, pretty much a big ole sun bitch, and start pulling out my uniform, beret, black military hiking boots, black cargas, light kevlar jacket, black gloves, and a compression shirt with a big fucking E on it dead center. I feel like I've just broke the barrier into the cringe epicenter. But it feels good to be myself, an absolute uneronic edgelord. They told me that you were dangerous to our enemies, but I had no idea you belonged to the tribe even Caesar avoids. Pretty much saying, I ain't looking for in-game character issues nigga, let's fuck shit up. 
so with that we're off to the cave. Viper fags didn't build a wall around their encampment, so sneaking in was an easy roll. Sneak roll, 10. Plus 5 for dark clothes bitch. Get in with no one really seeing anything. Vulp decides to kill 3 raiders because, why not? Pew pew one through his makeshift pillow. Vulp stabs 2 in the neck with a spear. Sneaking gave us 10 on attacks, all our rolls were high. Once we get in the cave we find 10 more vipers, dispersed so that we can not, without retarded high rolls, sneak past them. Fuck.jpg. Retarded idea comes to mind. What if we shoot one of our guns and draw them out of the cave? Looks at me like I'm retarded and PMs me to change my post. What if we throw a grenade as hard as we can towards the other side of the camp? When it explodes, we hide and wait for these guys to run by. Retarded idea but let's try anyways. Vulp has a 6 base strength so he's gonna throw it. Give him by only plasma grenade. Fucking critical success. The grenade lands just at the makeshift camp's edge. Car fucking boom, more goo on these viper fags than on a Asian chick during a buck ache. The guys in the cave bust out in a full sprint, don't even fucking notice our giggling asses. After they're all gone we hit up the mods with our speed rolls. 14 and 17. We be cruising at max speed through the caves, I'm taking the lead. Every so often we have to roll for a sneak, because a few niggas are still here, but we keep getting mediocre rolls. Finally get to the end of the cave system and we find a sacrificial blood pit. I shit you not. A mod took 10 minutes explaining to us the most edgy thing I've yet to come by in this roleplay hashtag drdjasias. At the center of the bloody and gore covered room is a large natural hot spring that has been emptied of water. What it was replaced with was the blood of hundreds of men, women, and children. Almost too hot to touch, the blood pit was obviously cultic. What the fuck dot pip boy. On one side of the room is a shitty shack made out of bones. Tied to the shack is the gagged and beaten boss bitch. She's knocked out right now, but she'll be up and running in about 5 minutes. Do a perception roll. 16. I don't really see anything other than the shack, the bitch, and the priest. Wait. The priest? In the shack is sitting an armless, legless, tongueless, man beast that only serves to be a priest to the vipers. He moves uncomfortably in his chair as you advance toward him. Youth Darth ent where the hole we plath? Audible kex at this point. Shall we kill him in the name of your enclave, or for the legion? At the word enclave boss bitch is awake and apparently trying to break out. We watch for a few turns as she keeps rolling but only receives minus 10 to her rolls. For being gagged, beaten, and chained. How about we just piss off the vipers and drown their god, or whatever, in the blood. Vulp PMs me and says dude you're such a fucking monster. Walk over to the weird paraplegic nigger. Pick up the fucker, walk over to the blood pit. Gently place him face down in the pit and pat his back gently until he stops struggling. Well that's done with. Untie the girl Vulp, we better get out of here before the snake cunts decide to come check on no limbs the pirating priest. Vulp unties the chick and somehow she has newfound strength. What fuck is the enclave doing in the Mojave? Too easy. For one, saving your ass from rape and eventual sacrifice to the blood gods. Too easy. For one, saving your ass from rape and eventual sacrifice to the blood gods. Conrad PMs me fucking wrecked. We spend a few turns just arguing back and forth. Like all boss cucks, this bitch has a procreated hate for the fascist xenophobic transphobic enclave. She obviously hasn't read any of mine or Conrad's posts. Doesn't know that we've not been harassing innocent people or attacking the boss Inca. We've been running all over the wasteland trying to stay away from them. I should mention that although our in-game actions were not bad or necessarily uncalled for, the mods and cucks that we killed absolutely ass blasted our reputation in the ook chat. There was a faggot mod who liked to play as chicks who knew me from another site, he leaked all my roller plays. My face when I'm too fashy for regular goyim. So what's the plan on getting out of here? You know they have line and army, right? No shit bitch. We snuck in on our own accord, we can sneak back out. Just don't do anything stupid. We each roll for sneak, to see how well we could make an escape. Boss bitch rolled better than me and Vulp. What? Our rolls are high enough that only one viper nigger sees us. Vulp decapitates this guy with a spear throw, yet I shit you not. Critted him. 
Once we get to the entrance of the cave we can see that the viper tards are still trying to figure out why their friends got buck ached. Roll another sneak. Boss bitch fucking crit fails. Half the camp has her triple attempt spike or something. Well shit. Speed roll. We all get 15-19, because shit the roll gods didn't forsaken us. We nope right out of there in record time, but they know that we were there. That's no good because what if they come looking for us with a fucking army. Welp time to nope all over the Mojave. We get back to the town and Conrad is being yelled at by some NPC because he got in a bar fight and brutally beat a man and stole his money. LPM him later and asked how much he got. Walk up to the NPC and speech check. Well I guess the guy your friend beat up was causing a lot of trouble anyways. Here, this is for not killing the guy. Gives Conrad 25 caps. Fucking what? I see you got the girl back from the vipers, any trouble? They might have seen us but we outran them by a mile before getting back to the town. We do a little idle chatter, tell Conrad about the blood pit. Disappointed that he didn't get to see it but he's glad we drowned some weird priest. Had a good laugh while the boss girl was brooding about being saved by an enclave boy. Don't worry I changed before returning to town. Presume we should go talk to the bar owner, he'll give us something for saving this girl, right? Correct Amando Vulp. Walk in the bar and the GM steps into play as the owner. I see that you found your friend. Not our friend nigger. Welp I bet the mayor would be happy to thank you for saving her and getting rid of those raiders. Wait, we were supposed to get rid of them? I thought that you'd catch that if your friend couldn't do the job, you would have too. First off we don't know her, you kinda guilt tripped us into going and getting her. Bitch pops off. I'm standing right here you know, I didn't need help anyways. Everyone, even Richardson, gives this chick the stank eye. Yep, yeah, so you thought we'd be going and killing an army of raiders? The four of us? But there's five of you. Guy points at the chick. She was about to become a wall decoration and a second story to the bone shack. What a Roman Catholic. Oh goddammit.com. Never mind that, we never signed on to go and kill all those fuckers. You asked us to get the girl, we got the girl. I never implied you had to kill them. Stop changing the subject. We got the girl, what are we getting for saving her? I then fucking realized that the GM hadn't read the posts about me and Vulp going full tactical mode to get the bitch. Also realized that I should have dropped it and fucked off. Here's the kicker. They saw the girl after she made a bunch of noise, but they didn't follow us. Are you fucking serious? They're gonna think that we went and saved her. Are you fucking mad? Relax, they didn't follow us. That doesn't fucking matter, we're the only settlement even minorly close to them. They'll come straight here and slaughter us until they find the girl. And that's how the cookie crumbles. We can find a way to get them to go looking somewhere else. Maybe we could evacuate the town. Oh that's smart, send them to go kill different innocent people. Owner pauses to sigh and rub his temple. Go to the mayor. We're going to have to organize a militia or something. We could call for the Brotherhood of Steel. They'd help. Bitch is so ignorant that she thinks the corner kids are gonna help anyone except themselves to a shitty monologue session. Extremely doubt that the Brotherhood would have anything to do with a small town on the outskirts of the Mojave. Bitch tries to drop bombs on Olay Peter, and why in the fuck should the Enclave care? All you people do is kill and attack everyone. I should tell you that I'm 90% sure that this chick is, in real life, a fat sand whale who loves Antifa, there were a few sympathizers among the edgelords. Bar owner looks at me confused and Conrad is about to knock this bitch off her feet. Put my hand on Conrad, to keep him back from smacking this hoe. Because unlike your, pause to emphasize, brotherhood. I, and the enclave, take responsibility for our actions. Your brotherhood of steel on the other hand take what you want and leave. Our goal is to rebuild the world and see to it that humanity prospers. Not hoard technology and lie about how we got it. How many innocents gave the brotherhood let die so that they could get their hands on a simple laser pistol? How about you do me a favor and fuck off? You'll turn tail and run anyways, that's all your brotherhood does when backed up against a wall. You have no sense of duty, only a sense of greed and self-preservation. Rookshat explodes from the amount of butt that this bitch got. The mods, obviously, backed her up. But the bad guys like my boy Conrad and the Legion Boar just ignored it. Bitch doesn't acknowledge the absolute roast I dropped on her, she just turns to the owner and says. 
I'll be back with who I can bring. We'll deal with both the vipers and the, literally spats on my character, the enclave. Conrad rolls for strength. 14. Knocks bitch on her ass. Bitch stumbles to her feet and runs out the door. Are we fucked Peter? I don't know Conrad. There's four of us. The sheriff and his deputy. Maybe a few of the townsfolk will help out. Vulp, go tell the mayor what's happening. Tell him to round up the townsfolk while we try to figure something out. After we drink a few waters and feed Richardson a steak we go out of the bar to find Vulp, the mayor, the sheriff, his deputy, and 20 scared shitless townsfolk. We'll need to get the women and children to Good Springs. Everyone who can fight will stay. Maybe Good Springs will send a few of their people to help out. We continue talking with the mayor and sheriff for a while until we send Conrad to Good Springs. He had the highest agility. Do you think we should call in my brother? He could have two cohorts here before nightfall. That may be a good idea but that boss bitch said she's bringing friends. They'll kill them all if they cross paths on the way here. You have a good point. What do we do if these raiders overrun us? Kill until your enemies until you fall. That's the enclave way. Retreat isn't an option really, unless for tactical reasons. How does the legion do it? You shall fall upon your sword before refusing the opportunity to buy your farm. I smiled and looked at the town. We need to set up some sort of fortifications. We have to funnel them through the town center. Sheriff get your people to work while we find a good enough strategy to survive this. Me and Vulp spend a few turns mapping out how we'll distribute townsfolk to different buildings so they can shoot from relative safety. Out of fucking nowhere the mayor walks up and starts talking to us. Daryl, the owner of the bar, told me what you said. Are you really with the enclave? El I were fatty for a few seconds before replying. I am. Is there a reason you're asking or are you just confirming who you'll be shooting in the back later? Come with me. We need to talk. The mayor takes us to the ransacked store and walks around behind the counter. If the girl was able to get rid of those raiders we were gonna give her this. But now we will have to use them to survive. You have to promise that you'll help us. Me and Vulp look back and forth at one another confused. We promise. The mayor opens the cash register takes out the cash bin and presses a hidden button. Behind him a fourth wall jostles open. The mayor turns and opens the door completely revealing a terminal and the death it commands. I know what the fucking at this point but the mayor just walks over to the terminal. We've known about this for a long time, but none of us know how to hack the terminal so that we can get anything working. They aren't military grade but they'll still be a big help if we can get them working. Walk over to the terminal and do an intelligence and science check. I have intelligence 10 in my specials and science in my skills. Critical success. Get fucked. I'm in the console but it says there isn't any real software. It'd all be starting off retarded and near useless. Unless. I pause and start going through my bag until I pull out a circuit board. I quickly pull off a few parts and set the board down. What are you doing? I'll use this memory drive to pretty much reformat all of these, making them useful. Stick the drive in the terminal and press a few buttons. Memory processing. Memory read. Memory copying. Memory copied. Fast forward a few hours and we've fortified the town. It's sunset and the women and children have been evacuated to Good Springs. Conrad returned with some bitch, a dog, an old man with more explosives than an enclave demolition team, and three farmers with shotguns. All in all we had 18 people, including Richardson and the dog. Me and Vulp couldn't really remember how many vipers we killed but we were sure they still outnumbered us 2 to 1. As the sun began to fade and darkness engulfed the land we saw torches coming down from the mountain. They're more torches people than we remembered being in the camp. Then again we killed a priest so I guess they might have gotten some friends rounded up. We had the settlers deployed to separate houses while me, Conrad, Vulp, the sheriff, the deputy, and Richardson were all in a makeshift bunker. We had filled bags with sand and piled them facing the funnel entrance of the town. At either side we had tarps strung up, we made it seem like they were for hiding our fallback line if we had to retreat. There was at least 50 pissed off vipers and they came straight down the road, up to the entrance of the town. One of them yelled out, we want the girl and the ones that killed our boys. The girl ran off, what about the ones that killed our guys? Conrad just couldn't help himself. How about you do me a favor and fuck right off? Fucking Vault Dwellerarians. 
Guy doesn't even turn around, just puts his hand out another viper faggot put a rusty sword thing in his hand. I'll jump up so the guy can see me clearly, in my fancy enclave uniform and beret. If you come into this town, we'll kill every last one of you. The guy laughs it off and keeps walking until he is past the gateway of the funnel. Yes your buddy. You and what army? Too easy. I smiled at the guy and pressed a button on my pit boy. On my left and right Vulp and Conrad tore down the tarps revealing my army, for the enclave. 12 protectorants that had been programmed with Egor's memories unloaded, in unison, a volley of laser fire that killed the viper leader in an instant. Conrad yelled out as he unloaded with his RCW. Kill em all for the enclave. The vipers started sprinting full speed into the gunfire and Richardson let out a beastly roar as he jumped into the free. Shrugging off any attempts at killing him as if they were nothing more than scratches. The windows on each building were broken as the settlers began unloading into the viper army. Dumb bitch and her dog got themselves killed by trying to be a hero and ambush the vipers. The egos were more than enough to kill the vipers, but by the smoke was lifted and blood stopped flowing. Only 7 egos still stood. A few of the vipers who surrendered had been lined up against a wall and shot. The mayor left his building and ran up to me at crazy speeds for his fat bureaucratic ass. Why'd you kill them? We could have sold them to the NCR as prisoners. Initiate edge mode. Because I told them if they entered this town that I'd kill every single one of them. Pause to squat down and pick up the viper leader's rusty sword. Even if I wasn't a man of my word. The enclave doesn't take prisoners. Conrad, Vulp, and Richardson mosey on over to me after they've looted all the bodies for gear. Or in Richardson's case, got a belly fool. What are we doing now Peter? The vipers are dead, but that chick said she'll bring the boss with her. I do doubt they'd come to this town, but they'll kill us all. God knows what they'd do to the settlers here. We will have leave, tonight. She won't be able to get back here with the brotherhood unless they have a vertebrate, if they had one we'd already be dead. I looked over my shoulder and saw all of the townspeople cheering as they ran into the arms of their brothers, fathers, and friends. Feels moment. What is it Peter? I turn back to Vulp and Conrad. A few years ago the brotherhood marched with an army on our greatest stronghold. They blew up the base, slaughtered everyone inside, and didn't let a single verti but escape without a chase. I paused. Not even the ones that only had women and children and them. They attacked us because we were going to give the greatest technology we had away to the people, freely. We were going to see to it that Washington could become a safe haven for humanity and humanity alone. Clean water that would be harmless to humans, but would mercifully kill ghouls and mutants in an instant. At least that's what the story is. Some say that it was just gonna be a big fucking purifier. Why are you telling us this? My character wipes tears from his eyes. I wonder what would have happened if we won. Would we embrace our brother in arms with love, or mourn for those who sacrificed their lives so that humanity could be brought back from the brink? That night, after everyone went to sleep, me, Conrad, Vulp, Richardson, and the Egos began our journey away. Before we left we were flanked by two of the settlers who had partaken in the defense of Bonnie Springs. Apparently the Vipers had attacked and killed the family of these two, before we arrived. Now that they were dead, the vipers that is, they wanted to join us. Apparently the owner of the bar and the mayor had a bigging fucking mouth and spouted off that we were the enclave. Pretty much the reward for successfully defending the town was two human NPC companions for our ragtag team of doucher bags. We'd take all the help we could get, and at this point we were found out so hiding that I was a part of the enclave was, most likely, not going to work for players. I pulled out my armbands and distributed them to Conrad, the two NPCs, and I looked at Vulp. What are you waiting for? I hand him an armband and he slips it on his left arm. I take my berry out of my pocket and fit it on my head. We were now wrapping enclave colors in an unfriendly land. Boss and NCR were going to try and kill us wherever they could find us. First mission was to head south, get supplies, and actually build a moral fortification around enclave. Knew what I was doing, but those fucking edge lords didn't have any idea why I would interact with NPCs. The GM got it though. We headed south, by dawn we were walking through Good Springs. Nice little town, home to about 50 people. They had heard about what we did for Bonnie Springs so, to the surprise of Vulp, they offered us plenty of food, water, and ammunition. 
Enough so that even a group of dipshits like us could hold out against the edgelords. After we left the safety of Good Springs we were, once again, on the road. Mods knew that now they'd be able to hit us with some fat random encounters. But they'd have to go through the GM first. GM was an OG. While walking down the road we start hearing gunshots from the southeast, towards some sort of airfield. We decide to leave the egos behind because, fuck they ray loud and still retarded. Each of us rolls for perception, we had a good view so approaching was needless. I rolled a 18, Conrad got a 3, and Vulp got a 12. What I could see was that some powder gangers ambushed and killed a bunch of legion soldiers, from what I could tell that had to be freshly trained because they all looked young and not well armed. I checked the posters and it wasn't our legion bros, just some mods trying to bait us into doing stupid shit, i.e. get some of our companions killed. I have to emphasize to you how butthurt the mods were that we were growing in numbers, but I can only do it in a metaphor. Their asses were more hurt than a baboon's ass was red. I'm talking they were trying to siege the GM and get him to kill off our companions. GM was not a retard. He knew that us bad guys were outnumbered player wise. I knew that if he saw me Raoul playing as an anti-hero instead of a fully edgy gas the ghouls mutant war now type of villain. He'd throw me some bones and not let the edge lords, lefties, and NCR kids dogpile me. Mods on the other hand were taking the side of the good guys. GM made a deal with them. If they brought good random encounters to the table he'd allow them to throw whatever they had at us. It wasn't until the powder gangers somehow saw us and started throwing dynamite that ook shit hit the fan. So the GM stopped the roleplay right then as I was about to roll for speed. He got so fucking pissed that the mod meter gamed that he banned him on the spot. The ook erupted in fountain of shit to challenge Hawaii's volcano nigga woohoo. Other mods are threatening to stop helping when out of nowhere he starts banning them too. Me, Conrad, and Vulp are losing our shit and the PMS. After about 2 hours ook, the GM unbans everyone except the mod who meter gamed. Now that was a solid story, now I go really enjoyed it, but I'm a bit disappointed we never got to see a showdown with the NCR and be able to steal, that would have been fucking great. I, I, like, I would have really enjoyed that. Especially with, like, you know, the new Fallout game being some shit and all, like, you know, like, I'm not getting gonna get too much into it, but, like, you know, we all love, um, Fallout New Vegas. It's just a great game. Um, I don't know anyone that's played it says, oh, I don't, I, will, I don't really get into it. No, it was fucking outstanding. and everyone loves it. Um, and that new Fallout game was horrible, so I think we needed a good Fallout fix, let's just say, you know what I mean? Um, but no, this here video, oh, th sorry, not this video, this story was actually um, recommended to me, so it was. Now, if you do have recommendations, if you've got submissions, all that type of shit, uh, I would recommend put it into the Discord because you can put it in the comments, but if you put a link in where you comment, it's it gets flagged instantly and YouTube just makes the comment disappear and it's just a nightmare so it is so like you know if you have anything definitely put it in the discord join the discord down below now i will warn you uh, we do have a customs in the discord and we've got a strict no furries or weebs uh policy so like you know if you got any of that type of stuff i would recommend you disguise yourself i don't we we, we don't ex we don't accept degenerates in the discord we're a bit like caesar's legion in that regards but yeah um if you want to get in you're gonna have to follow by that be honest with you no degeneracy um but anyway so as i say put it in there private message me whatever you know what i mean i try to get back to as many people as i can even though i don't always do it i know i'm a bit shit but look, um, I've gambled for long enough. I thought this was great. I really enjoyed the story. Uh, Lightning was above uh, par. And who doesn't know Fallout New Vegas? Like, come on. Um, but anyway, as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the wee notification bell to stay up to speed with any and all further videos. And I've been rambling enough, so I'll let you get going. Alright? If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. Oh, fuck yeah! This is the shit! Kill me now! Two for the pink, one for the stink, baby. Two for the pink, one for the stink. You can switch it around if you want, if you're a real man. Ah!